Namaste from Mawai guys, my name is Arvind and welcome back to our YouTube channel. So guys, this video is very special and the reason why it is special is because today I will talk a little bit about uh, the acceptance of LGBT community in India, in Norway and also what are my thoughts about it. If you don't know, on, on 1st of July, uh, Oslo Pride Parade was held and about 90,000 people attended it. One very interesting point which was new to me was that in the kindergartens in Norway, they introduce LGBTQ community to them, right? What is pride? So I will share my thoughts about it and I would also like to see what are your thoughts about it. So please watch this video till the end. So guys, first of all, what is this LGBTQ and plus 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 uh, so this term i won't go too much deeper into this uh, but you can see this link uh, of new york times which is explaining this concept very much and uh, one thing about this uh, acronym is that it is an evolving term right so initially it was lgbt then it became lgbtq q stands for questioning or cure then i think uh, i was introduced a was introduced and then plus also it means that so that uh, people from all of uh, the different uh, perspectives related to this uh, community can be included in it, right? But that is not the whole purpose of this video, to make you aware of this uh, LGBTQ thing. And uh, the other thing is, uh, I will talk now about that, what are the laws in India in regards to that? So in the year 2014, the Indian Supreme Court, they actually recognized transgenders as the third gender and uh, they allowed them to participate equally in the society and to provide them equal opportunities whether it was education, employment or healthcare. So that was in year 2014. Then it was in the year 2018 that uh, section 377 of Indian Penal Code that was actually striked off and it was removed which decriminalized consensual same-sex relationship. But as of now in India or as of today in India, the hearing about this case is still pending from the Supreme Court and let's see what the result comes out. Okay, so now coming back to Norway and before I come to Norway, let me say, uh, let me tell a little bit about Sweden that uh, as per the public, you know, when you ask public, so 92% of the people in Sweden are in favor of uh, LGBT community. Okay, but we're going to not talk about that, but let's come back to Norway. So in Norway also, if you'll see that uh, they have kind of embraced this uh, LGBTQ community in a very open fashion. And uh, on 1st of July, there was this Oslo Pride Parade in which about 90,000 people participated and some of the most eminent personalities such as the Prime Minister and the former Prime Minister, all of them were the part of this parade. Uh, so here, right now, you can see some of the clippings which we have taken from the National News Channel of Norway, NRCO. And here you can see that uh, people are vibrant, even different universities, they participated in that, even my university participated in that. So let's talk about the history of Oslo Pride. So I think it was in the year 1970s when uh, the disco was in and, you know, there was a fashion of bell bottoms, the real, um, you know, the hip hop culture was back then. So some of the activists, uh, they actually came together and started this uh, thing in Norway. And as I've told you earlier that in 2023, about 90,000 supporters of this Oslo Pride Parade, they have joined in. So the first thing that you'll see is that there are the rainbow colored flags everywhere. Everywhere means literally everywhere. Even in my neighborhood, people have hoisted them. In my university, it is hoisted. Even the logo of most of the universities that is in this rainbow uh, colored uh, theme. And you, you find this uh, literally everywhere, especially in the month of June, which is the Pride Month. And 
uh, even you know in the apps they have changed the theme to this uh, rainbow color thing which means that as a community we support the pride and now what you're seeing is this is some of the visual images uh, or the video which i actually shot from my phone in uh, my particular university and over there also people are very open about it they accept it and then say yes we need to uh, support this moment so that is good as well but uh, one of the most strange things which i found was that even at the kindergarten right we're basically we send our kids to the kindergarten from first when he or she is one year till six years. Even in the kindergartens, they are educating children about this moment. So here I have a bit of a resistance. So even in my daughter's kindergarten, there were flags and uh, I don't know what kind of education did they give. But to me, this is a little bit strange because on one hand, children at that age, they don't know anything about religion. They don't know anything about what is good or bad for them. So exposing them to this thing can be a little bit dicey as per me. And the reason could be that my cultural background since I'm from India. So I have a little bit of resistance to that. And I've talked to a lot of friends uh, uh, about this and they also share the same opinion. So that is actually uh, one thing which bothers me a little bit that, you know, there is a right age, okay, at the college level, at the school level, high school level, if you are introducing this concept to the students that, okay, there is freedom in every sense in this country, then I accept it because, okay, at that time you are somehow, you know, you have these questions like, okay, what is sexuality? What is this? Because that is the age of puberty. But when a child is adolescent, introducing them with this concept because for them rainbow unicorns this is their part of imagination they don't uh, you know attach a meaning to it for them rainbow is vibrant it has to be vibrant but then attaching this meaning to it that okay there is this whole uh, wonderland out there which you can explore when you go up so for me that is a bit strange for me uh, to be frank okay so and one of the motives of making this video is because i wanted to hear what other people whether they are from Indian community or any other community, what are they thinking about this fact, right? Because I'm not saying that my thought is the thought, that is the truth, uh, that is the truth, right? I'm open to listen to all of the people and then adapt as per that thing because uh, I accept I'm not uh, superhuman, <laughs> uh, okay? So that's one thing. So please, whatever your thoughts are, share it down below and uh, let me know what do you think about it. And especially this thing that whether this concept of pride and uh, the LGBT community should be introduced to uh, the kids at this level. Another thing which is going on right now on social media, especially Twitter, is that people have posted these pictures uh, from the pride and they are kind of resisting because in this pride parade, there are kids again from different age, say five, six, seven years. And then, they, and then there are uh, very contradictory kind of uh, themes that are going on this pride parade because uh, the kid can ask his or her parent, depending upon, again, what is your background. If maybe you are from a very open and a Western society where everything uh, uh, is at the same level, then it's easier for yeah, these guys to explain. But if you come from uh, another societies, especially, say, Asia or Africa, where there is some kind of resistance in being open to the, to the kids, then it becomes quite, uh, kind of difficult for parents uh, to discuss this thing, right? So that is another thing that is going on about them. But then now the question is, what are my personal thoughts about it? See, I personally feel that uh, and that, okay, you, after a certain age, you are free to explore the space, what you want to, right? And again, you have to abide by the law of the land where you are living, okay? And the ultimate thing is whether it is bringing happiness not only to you because you might be happy in pursuing one particular agenda but if it is creating this tumultuous environment around you and then you are kind of you know propagating a thing which you think is, uh, uh, is uh, the truth then that is kind of contradictory. Right? Because again, people can have different thoughts, they can have different feelings. But the end goal is that a society should live in a very amicable, in a very friendly way and there should be happiness all around it. And uh, so whatever could be at the back doors of, of it, right? So for me, the personal freedom is very important, but not at the expense of uh, the society, right? If it creates a harm to the society, then that is not. So 
that is my personal thought about it and uh, i have already shared this thing that uh, what worries me is that this concept being introduced at a very rudimentary and at a very initial stages where the children are like they are just nascent they are naive they don't know anything about it but then you are telling them to, okay there is you can a boy can marry a boy a girl can marry a girl because okay this is just love so that is a bit bothering to me okay so these were my thoughts and that is what i wanted to share so i hope uh, i haven't irritated a lot of different people and you don't bash me but uh, please i would like to know your thoughts about it in the description box you'll find some of the links where you can see actually the oslo pride parade and uh, other relevant information but in the comments i would love to hear your thoughts what do you think about this video and i'm open to debate if there is someone and as i said that uh, i am ready to educate myself uh, about uh, these matters because you know i have never experienced it myself uh, but i am ready to hear what people have to say so that's it uh, please do share subscribe and uh, like this video if you genuinely like it namaste from norway